Hello and uh, welcome to my kitchen. I'm Ellen and I just wanted to quickly introduce myself to you all before we dive straight in with this week's first video. So I have been working on uh, helping Steph out and transforming her Our Fundamentals book into a series of blog posts and videos for you all to follow along with and hopefully pick up um, new skills along the way. So uh, this week we are going to look at our studio downloading, installing, getting started, its main components, some of the functionality. Um, and I just wanted to take five minutes just to explain all the things that I wish had been explained to me when I was brand new to this, which was only two years ago. So, you know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So I think we will just dive straight in and get going and uh, see how you go. So this is the R Studio website that is linked in the blog and if we just go under products and to our studio this will take us to the download page for our studio and if we just scroll down download it for desktop and again select the desktop version and choose the one for your platform I'm on a Mac so I choose this one and you'll also need our as well as our studio and the link to that can be found there so just go through to this website and this will give you all the background bits you need to get our working so this is our studio out of the box and as you'll see it when you first open it you'll have blank screens obviously I can't stand the white background, so if you go into preferences and appearances, you can change it to one that is a little bit easier to look at for extended periods of time if you think you're going to be doing a lot of work on it like I do. So in the top left window, I have got a document already open that I've been working on today, and I am about to open an R script, which is a bit like a, a notepad that you can put your work into to come back on and save and work on again later, and that kind of caper. And we'll just load in a data set quickly so that I can show you the full uh, shebang, the full functionality of um, our studio. So this is a, a preloaded inbuilt data set that anybody can use. Uh, and we'll just have a quick look. And so if you see in the bottom left hand corner here, we've got the console. This shows all your outputs, all your workings. Um, and if you write a, a line of code in the script above and you save that, then your the answers to the line of code that you run will show up in the console. And as you can see, you can also write in the console. The downside is if you make a mistake, like I've done obviously on purpose there, with the capital letter, you will have to go back and retype it or uh, go back and edit it again. And you it isn't always obvious where the, the problem is. So I find it much better to work in an R script and uh, be able to go back and edit it time and time again and play around with it and edit it up there until I'm happy with it, until it's doing what I want. And then I can save that and not have to worry about losing it because I've done it in the console. So if I just show you quickly the main difference between an R script and a, an R Markdown document, I'm going to put the same code in here, but I'm going to embed it within the Markdown document. Um, you have to set up a code section and the rest of it is just text. You can set headings and uh, page breaks and things like that with Markdown code. So I'm just going to add in the instruction and I'm going to run it. And as you can see, it embeds the results rather than them popping up in the console and not being available. Uh, again, it's it's embedded within your document and you can knit this uh, into a HTML or a PDF. And it's all nice and neat and readily presented for you to show someone how fabulous your R skills are. And this text might look a little bit familiar. That's because it is the blog post you have already read. Yes, we did that in R2. So, in the top right hand corner of the R Studio GUI is the environment. And as you can see, that data set that we loaded in is in there, and you can click it to view your data sets. 
don't do this if your data set is huge because it will crash your computer and if you go to the grid option you can see what type of data frame it is that might be a table a data frame a data table a matrix a list and then we have the history as you can see I've been very busy this is super useful if you uh, are fiddling around with your code and delete something and then realize again that you need it later and you can't find it and then in the bottom right hand corner we have the several tabs along the top so files is really useful if you think oh I could just do with just do with opening up that script again that I used last week I just need to nick a little bit of code out of there and you can navigate through really easily uh, and find what you're looking for and open it all within the R Studio viewer without having to go and faff around in your files uh, back on your desktop and stuff and now in the plots window so if you are going to start uh, generating plots I think we'll just do one quickly just to show you what's going on so using the plant growth data set and the first column in that data set we'll just generate a little histogram and that's where all your plots will appear when you're running them in the R Studio viewer and then you can save it as an image save it as a PDF export it keep hold of it that kind of thing your packages are where all your functions live to help you do all sorts of data wrangling tasks that you're going to be super whizzy at soon and uh, just a little example of how you would load one of those in. You have to do this every time you open up your document. Make sure you run them in each session because it won't remember but you only need to install them once. So if you find uh, that you're missing a package, you can look for it in there and install it and then it will be there for you to load in using the library. And then you've got your help function. So this can be accessed by a, a double or a single question mark typed directly into the console and that will bring you up a list of options and you can just pop the function name after the question marks and it will bring up the help page for you so that you don't have to go scrolling through or if you just need a quick reminder of how to use something or what arguments it takes that kind of thing it's good for just looking it up quick without getting lost in the deep dark underbelly of the uh, the R forum pages because you could be there for days and then at the bottom of most help pages there's just a little example of how it's intended to be used and that hi me again so uh, I hope that was okay hope you understood everything that was going on in the next blog we will be having a look at different data types the kind of things you're going to come across when you start loading data into our studio to start working on it uh, so come back for that that should be good. Thanks very much. Feel free to tweet me or Steph or Lock Data with any questions you might have and uh, with about that video and we can follow up on that. So until next time, uh, I'll love you and leave you. See you later.